In this session, I am going to discuss acute inflammation, the vascular events of acute inflammation. So before starting the topic, you must have an overview of what is inflammation. So inflammation is the local response of the living mammalian tissue to an injury from any agent. Actually, it is the defense mechanism. Now, you must understand the difference between infection and inflammation. So in infection, one of the microorganisms can enter in human body and causes the disease, the harmful effects. By microorganism, I mean four things. Either it can be a bacteria, it can be a virus, it can be a fungus or it can be a parasite. So one of the four infectious organisms, the bacteria, virus, fungus or parasite can enter human body and can cause the ill effects that is the diseases that is known as infection. In response to infection, the human protective response is there that is with the help of the WBC, it's like the army, right? So that will try to prevent or the, to limit the infectious organism. So inflammation is in response to infection and they are opposite. You got my point? So inflammation is in response to infection. Uh, you can say infection is like a terrorist. Some foreign element is entering human body. And inflammation is like the army trying to limit it, trying to hold it. So how you will define inflammation? Now, so can I say inflammation is the body defense reaction? Yes, it's the defense mechanism of human body in order to eliminate or limit the spread of the injurious agent, which can be bacteria, virus, fungus, parasite, anything. Now the inflammation, the most important cells are WBC, that is leukocyte, that is human army. Now let me classify the inflammation. Before starting the acute inflammation, its vascular events, let me classify inflammation. Inflammation is of two types, the acute inflammation and chronic inflammation. It is of two types, acute inflammation and chronic inflammation. Acute inflammation is rapid in onset. The chronic inflammation is late in onset. Uh, for understanding the differences between acute and chronic, let's take two examples. Now, acute inflammation, the best example to be quoted here is tonsillitis. We have tonsillitis several times in our life. So, we have experienced it. I guess everyone have experienced it. It's a very common disease. So it is an example of acute inflammation and in chronic inflammation let's take an example of tuberculosis you can see inside the lungs it's tuberculosis so both of them are caused by bacteria the acute inflammation can be caused by a bacteria like streptococcus pyrogens the chronic inflammation can also be caused by a bacteria the tb the tb can also be caused by a bacteria that is mycobacterium tuberculosis so here after the after arrival of the uh, injurious agent that is bacteria uh, it will be immediate within few hours the uh, disease will start but here after arrival of the bacteria entering the bacteria into the organ it can be latent for many months or years and when the immunity drops it will start so here onset is fast here onset is slow that is the meaning of the onset the meaning of the onset is the time duration from the entry of the infectious organism till the first symptom that is onset and here uh, once we have tonsillitis it will be uh, subsided it will be treated within next few days or maximum weeks whether you take treatment or don't take treatment within few weeks it will be uh, corrected it will be treated but what about TB if you take treatment the minimum course of the dots is six months if you don't take it will be for years so the duration of the disease is short here the duration of the disease is long here so onset is fast onset is slow the duration of disease is short the duration of disease is long we understood the meaning of the onset and the duration so in acute inflammation onset is rapid and duration is short let's take an example of tonsillitis in chronic inflammation the onset is late it's late and duration is long so take an example of tb right in acute inflammation we have edema the hallmark of acute inflammation is edema and the hallmark of chronic inflammation is granuloma so here we have edema here we have granuloma in acute inflammation the main cells are the neutrophils in chronic inflammation, the main cells are the macrophages and the lymphocytes. So these are the differences between acute and chronic. So currently, I'm going to start the acute inflammation. Let's start acute inflammation. In acute inflammation, we are having five cardinal signs. What do you mean by cardinal signs? Cardinal signs are the signs which are present in all organ having that acute inflammation. Technically, we have acute inflammation from head to toe in all organs. We can have meningitis in the meninges. We can have um, uh, meningitis in the meninges, we can have ophthalmitis, retinitis, rhinitis, tonsillitis, bronchitis, appendicitis. So all the organs can have acute inflammation. But if acute inflammation is occurring in any of the organ, any of the organ, the organ will show the five features which are known as cardinal signs of acute inflammation. So let's take an example, the same example tonsillitis, easy to understand. So the tonsil become red in color. Can you see the tonsils are red in color? Relatively. 
as compared to normal. The temperature of the tonsil is more as compared to the surrounding tissue. The third thing, the tonsils are swelled up. That organ is swelled up. There is pain in the tonsil. That organ have pain whenever there is acute inflammation. And last is loss of function. It's temporary loss of function of that organ. Right. So the organ is red. The organ have increased temperature as compared to surrounding tissue. The organ have swelling. The organ have pain. And the organ have temporary loss of function. You got my point. These are the five cardinal signs. Now... Now, uh, you have to learn the cardinal signs not in English language. You have to learn in Latin language for your MCQs. So, redness. Do you know Latin? I don't know Latin. So, you have to learn. So, redness in Latin is known as rubor. Uh, increased temperature in Latin is known as calor. Learn the term calorimeter. Calorimeter from that you can understand. Calor. Calorimeter is an instrument uh, to measure the heat. So, calor is increased heat. Calor. Swelling is tumor. Don't confuse it with neoplasia. It's not benign and malignant tumor. The, the term tumor means malignancy in English language. But in lang Latin language, the tumor means swelling. Right, tumor. Pain is dolor. Pain is dolor. And loss of function is functionalasia. Right. You have to learn the five in Latin. Can you tell me the Latin? The five in Latin. It's rubor. It's calor. It's tumor. It's dolor. And it's functionalasia. So, rubor means redness, calor means increased temperature, tumor means swelling, dolor means pain and functionalasia means loss of function. The first three were discovered by a scientist known as Celsius and the last one is discovered by a scientist known as Virchow. So, these are the five cardinal signs. You can get MCQs on that. Let's start the events of acute inflammation. I can divide entire acute inflammation into five vascular and six cellular. So, total 11 events. I can divide the entire inflammation in 11 events. Let me teach you these 11 events one by one. Can you see these are the five vascular events? Can you see them? Yes. These are the six cellular events. Can you see them? Yes. So the five vascular and the six cellular events, they are in front of you. So this is the master diagram in which I am going to teach total 11 events. The five vascular and six cellular. So in this diagram, let me explain you this diagram. Can you see this yellow line? This is drawn here. The line which is drawn here, it is the skin. Imagine this is the human skin of this portion of my body, right? Just below the skin, I have drawn the injurious agent. This is a bacteria. This injurious agent can be anything, bacteria, virus, fungus, parasite, anything. But imagine this is a bacteria for the sake of understanding. Now you can see a blood vessel here. This is a blood vessel. You can see the lining of the blood vessel by endothelial cells. These are the endothelial cells. The lining of the blood vessel is by endothelial cell. Inside which you can see these are the WBCs. These are the WBCs. Now I will call the bacteria as a terrorist because it is a foreign element. And I will call the WBCs, these are the WBCs as army. So that is the army. So what happens when any terrorist enters the country's boundaries? The army get activated and there is a fight between the terrorist and the army and let's see who is winning. You got my point. So in the same way here also in human body we want to make a fight between the bacteria that is injurious agent and the WBC. But what is the problem? The problem there is a little problem in that fight. The problem is that the bacteria is extravascular outside the blood vessel and the army the WBCs are intravascular inside the blood vessel. Now to make them fight we have to make them meet. We have to make them meet. There are two possibilities. Either you take the bacteria inside, no, 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 bad option. It's a bad option. It will, call, it will cause sepsis. It will, it will result in sepsis, right? It is not a very good option. The second way, you can take the WBC out to make them fight. Yes, it looks to a wise option. So in all those 11 events, the ultimate goal is to take the WBC out and make a fight between the bacteria and the WBC, which is known as phagocytosis. The last event will be phagocytosis. So let's start the 11 events. Among the 11 events, let's start the vascular events. So first I will be uh, discussing the 5 vascular events and then I will discuss the 6 cellular events. In this, we, in this way, we can complete the total 11 events. In the 5 vascular events, the first event is transient vasoconstriction. Can you see this diagram? The same diagram. So as soon as the bacteria is coming in human body, so that portion of the blood vessel which is just below the bacteria undergo vasoconstriction. So it is transient, it is transient. This is not permanent, it is transient for few seconds only. So the first step is transient vasoconstriction, never forget. It's not pura diffuse, it's not diffuse the vasoconstriction, it's only focal. That portion of the blood vessel which is just near the injurious agent undergo vasoconstriction. The second is persistent vasodilatation. Now can you see this diagram? Now again the same portion of the blood vessel which was vasoconstricted for transiently for few seconds. Now it will undergo vasodilatation. 
Now this vasodilatation is persistent. It is persistent. It is not transient. It is persistent for next few days or weeks, right? It is persistent there. So this portion undergo vasodilatation. Now because of vasodilatation, just suppose this is my portion. This is my uh, part of skin. I am having an injurious agent here. So the blood vessel here first undergo 